here's what I've done so far today. I painted the road a dark gray that matches the paving stones, paving stone system. It's a knock system. Looks like this. It's pretty thin. It's got adhesive on the back. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm cutting out the spacers. Because I, I determined that if I'm using these Victorian paving stones from Wills, that I need to move them up just a little bit so that when I put the curb in there with the paving stones on the other side, that it, all the heights work. I will sand the corner of this, one corner of it, so that it's rounded or carve it perhaps. So what I've been doing right here is I've been fitting these uh, spacers. Once I get them fitted, what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal them so that when I use PVC glue, it won't, it won't pucker up. So the next thing I need to do is go to the store and get some sealant and then seal all these. I'm waiting for the paint to dry. I just put it on this morning. And I don't, if that adhesive works at all, it's, it will pull that paint up if, if it's not down, it's not down right. Well, I think that, I think that's the wrong end. I think it goes this way. Oh yeah. It's much better that way. There's a little sliver here that I've got ready to go in there. So that's kind of what, what it's going to look like. I wasn't too sure about this knock stuff in the beginning, but it's growing on me. You have to make sure you cut any sides that are going to butt up to one another with a straight edge because otherwise it doesn't, doesn't match up exactly. So, off to the store to get some sealer. Here's the package that the paving stones came in. Anybody's interested? Oh. This is a better end to look at. It's got the uh, the model number, the 57216H. I got the sealer, and I sealed these pieces of chipboard down. I did a little bit more trimming on it after I turned the camera off. So we now have we now have some trim to size spacers. I think I'll put the paving down next and then glue this down tight against it and then shape the pieces of paving stone to where they fit up against the curb. It's all very complicated. I'm hoping that works. I can't put the paving down till tomorrow because this this uh, paint is a little tender yet and when I scraped it over here because I needed to remove a little bit more grass I noticed that it peeled right up so it, it wasn't really adhered very well and I don't want to take a chance on it just sticking to the bottom of the cobblestones or I guess they're paving stones I keep calling them cobblestones but really they're paving stones material was very difficult to cut very accurately. I'm probably going to end this right here and then I will use my traditional tarmac method back here. So I'll cut this off at a straight angle and I will trowel my plaster that I use up to it and out all the way out. That's the plan anyway. If I had more of this stuff I would try to go ahead and run it all the way out but I don't, so I'll just have to get by with part of it. The oldest part will have these paving stones. If you can get them tight enough, the, the seam really disappears. But they have this slick release paper on the back right now, so it, it makes it a little difficult to... Uh, they, they just slip and slide all over the place. I'll start mounting that tomorrow be nice to get it permanently not mounted and see what I've got there. And then I can start working on the paving stones. We shall see.
I've made quite a bit of progress. I've got the rest of these spacers down and the, the road beds down. Unfortunately the color doesn't match. I wish I'd have gotten color matched pieces. Um, but, you know, I'm over here, that stuff's over there. It's a little hard to... I installed one piece of curbing and I've been cutting the paving stones using this method where I line it up so that it'll come out even. Probably can't see that. And I trace it along the curbing to get the shape. The hammer is there. It's uh, holding down one that I just glued. That's why the hammer is there. This section comes back. I'm going to have a little alley that kind of ducks back in right here. These cards are not exactly precision, I have noticed. The edges aren't necessarily straight. So I'll go cut this one I just marked. So I will uh, sand this and bevel it. Bevel it this way. I keep trying these to make sure that everything is fitting up right. The pub has an overhang on this end and has a little offset shed door on the other. So I'm putting a little little alley right there, a little walk, and I'll do the same on the other side. So I'll keep at this and uh, be back at you in a little bit. I'm putting the finishing touches on some of these tarmac areas, the the car park. And the road in. I did the uh, the main part of it the other day, and it's fully set up now. It's pink when it's wet, but uh, then when it dries out, it turns white. A little slightly a yellow white. That's so how you can tell that it, you, it's okay to sand it. The trick though is to get it on smooth enough that it takes very, very little sanding when you get done. It's meant for wall patching. It's very flexible. And you can get a very smooth surface with it. But it doesn't go in the little nooks and crannies very well. Too many obstructions. I've been working on a paint scheme for the tiles on the, on the uh, footpaths. And this is what I came up with. I don't know how well the color comes through. But it's almost a perfect match. It's a little bit lighter. But I think if I use a little soot, brush a little soot on it and wipe it off after it, the paint's all dry, I think it'll be pretty darn close. It's not far off. I can solve those right away. It's 
protection on the pod. I'm gonna have to add lighting. I'll probably put some lighting in the in the upper floors of one or two buildings because they